Hi everyone, here we are, we're at Five Fathom Hole. If you drive west from St. John, you go into Prince of Wales and then into Musquash. Uh, if you look over into the Musquash estuary, where the Musquash River meets the ocean and starts to open up, you might see what look like old barges or shipwrecks. Today, we're going to go there and I'm going to explain how those ships got to where they are. Thanks for watching. So we're launching here and going up river, up the Musquash River. So there's two ways of getting to these old sunken ships and barges. One way, you have to take a old four-wheeling trail to come up on the same side as them and make your way towards the boats on this side of the river. The other way is to come here, put in a five fathom hole and take a kayak. I choose to take the kayak. I think it's probably an easier route overall. More scenic route anyway. This is the first ship graveyard. As you see over here, there's remnants of old ships. Right here you can see an old steam boiler and the remnants of what was left of the ship. It's at the very bottom now. There's an old barge over here, what looks like was either a ship or maybe some wharfs. And then this. This here is a landing craft from the Second World War. This is an LSM, otherwise known as a landing ship medium. You can see in the front here, this is a door. It would slide open like this. It wouldn't fall forward like you see in movies like Saving Private Ryan. It would open up like this and you had tanks and troops, supplies, artillery, anything that you wanted would come off of these ships. You can see the interior of the ship back here. This is where the engines would have been. They were removed. As you can see here, this is the bottom of the ship. So it's clearly on its side. There is an old barge. And there is the boilers. And you can clearly see the boiler tubes. And this is the bow of the vessel. You can see that that is the hinge for the door to swing open like this. The other one is in the water, which swing the other way. Then troops, tanks, supplies come off this way. And up here, again, there is the steam boiler. You can see the tubes. Uh, you can see the outline of the ship. So it would have been an old wooden ship with a steam boiler on board for propulsion. There's some plovers. eating away at all the bugs that live in the mud here. Here's Mike. He tried to go up and see the boiler. He's incredibly stuck. <laughs> I told him to just keep going up. He's already past the worst of it, but he doesn't think so. There you go. Just flop in there like a fish. <laughs> We're coming upon the main reason that we came here, to solve the mystery of these ships. You can see just how wide and long these were. This is the same type of vessel as the one over here that sunk in the middle. We found another two landing craft. Here, to my surprise, you can still see the number 46, and on this one over here, 56. This is the front hatch on the bow, and you can see clearly how it would separate in the middle, come apart, and then you'd have the ramp. Troops would come off. You could get tanks on this vessel. So these three are the same. We had to come here during low tide because normally these ships are covered by the water in the high tide, especially the other one in the middle that's basically completely covered in water. 
here we are. We're at the stern of this vessel and the bow of this vessel. You can see the rudder on the stern of this number 56. The only issue with coming here at low tide, it's very difficult to get up to the shore. The mud is very sticky and you're gonna sink right through it. We're gonna try to come up this way, possibly have to climb over the ship. We came to shore, we found an old bottle. Not sure how long that's been here in the mud. This is the interior of number 46. I don't think we can get through there. I'm gonna try to walk around. Barely walk on it. <laughs> okay, we found an entrance way. The mud's too deep on the side. You can't walk through that. The interior of the ship. This is the main deck. The ship would have come back further, but it's all been cut away. Here's the bow section of number 56. So this would just drop straight down. You can see here where you have some cutting. They've used a torch to actually cut this section off. This would have looked similar to that other side in height. This is the stern of 46 main deck, and that's the bow. So doors open up, ramp drops. Same thing over here. but the front sections are cut away. These ships are in incredibly rough shape at this point. If you look at these ships today, they're just a hollowed out remnant of what they once were. This ship here, number 46, on February 19th landed United States Marines on the island of Iwo Jima. A few days later, it suffered four killed on board and 13 injured. The other ship here, number 56, it landed troops on April 1st, 1945 on the island of Iwo Jima. The other ship in the middle, we believe is either number 89 or number 78. That also is a veteran of the landings in Iwo Jima. The reason that these ships are here is actually a very interesting story. So after the war, these ships were purchased by a Mr. Wilson from the St. John Tugboat Company. Uh, he purchased these ships as military surplus. There were at least four that we know of that he actually brought up here to St. John. So there was the number 46, 56, 78, and 89. Um, they brought them here, they stripped them of their engines, they then sold the engines to NB Power, and they were sent up north to the Grand Falls Dam in northern New Brunswick. The ships were then recommissioned as barges, and the tugboats would take these around different ports inside the Bay of Funday and also the Gulf of Maine, uh, specifically to Bucksport, Maine. These ships were used to haul pulpwood from Graminan Island to the mainland and to do other jobs as well. After years of service in the 1960s, after all of the loading and unloading and being beached and unbeached, the hulls became so thin that it wasn't worth repairing anymore. And at that time, we believe one of these ships may have sunk off the coast of Grand Manan. The other three, they were brought here, placed on this shore to be scrapped. The company that was hired to come here and cut these down for scrap metal never actually finished the job. And someone 
took the other boat. They came here, got it off the beach, and it sank where you see it today. The land here belonged to Mr. Wilson, and it was then donated to the Nature Conservancy of Canada. We came here for the 75th anniversary of the ending of the Second World War and the surrender of the Japanese to pay homage to these ships, which not many people in the area know the true history about. That these Battlestar award-winning ships could sit here and just rot away. We came to we came to talk about the history and to hopefully have a video record for future generations to enjoy. We want to thank these ships for their service and for their sacrifice. There's a capstan. The wreck is completely full of mud and rotting away. When you walk along the ship, you have to make sure that you're walking along the ribs and girders or else you'll go right through it. These old copper or brass electrical fittings. It's into the hull. Got that camera rolling. Walk that tightrope. It's pretty amazing to see the interior of the ship. It's where men would have ran through at one time. There's stairs, haven't been used in years. Here we are on the 75th anniversary of the ending of the Second World War to pay tribute to these vessels which have been left here and forgotten and a memorial for the men that we lost during the Second World War. Thanks for watching.